Hi, everybody. Today, I'm going to be talking about web accessibility. So why should we make sites that are accessible? Tim Berners-Lee once said that the power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, is an essential aspect. I think that everyone in this room is committed to being inclusive and welcoming. Really, just by sh being a part of the Grace Hopper community, we have proven that. For whatever reason, if you don't care or you think you're too busy, just remember that there have been countless of lawsuits brought against companies that content wasn't accessible. But don't worry, making an accessible website doesn't have to be daunting. So we're going to go over three main points here today. One, the power of regular old HTML. Two, how to fix things when HTML fails us. And lastly, how to check to see if our site is accessible. So Ali here on number three is just a shorthand for accessibility. To start out with, I'm going to cover three top tips to keep in mind when you're designing. So here we have a little username password input. I put in my username. I hit submit. Oh, well, I forgot to put my password in. I get this nice little red box that says, oh, hey, don't, remember, don't forget. Great. Except not. <laughs> Make sure you don't only use color when giving your user information. One in every 12 men and one in every 200 women are colorblind. So this picture here shows what someone with colorblindness would see. So they would see like some weird brown thing and wouldn't know what to do. Next one is alt labels. So including an alt tab tag with a short description of your image is really important. Um, if the image is purely for aesthetic purposes, like a background or something like that, include it in your CSS rather than the HTML. That way, the screen reader won't have access to it, and it'll skip over it. And if you have to include your image in your HTML, use an alt tag like here, but leave it an empty string. And that's convention, so your screen reader will skip it. The next one is going to be links. So screen readers will automatically read out link and the text associated with that link. So here we have two links that go to the same spot. They both go to Google. But the first example would say, link, click here. And the second example would say, link, go to Google. So it's really important to remember to have meaningful information in your link tag. So we talked a little bit about what to do in your HTML. The next step is to talk, to talk about screen readers and what they are and how we use them. So a screen reader is a piece of software that takes your HTML and parses that into what's called the accessibility tree, and then speaks that information to the user and lets them traverse the alley tree by focusing on different elements. I think a great way to understand screen readers is to actually try one out. So we are going to do a little demo here. And we are going to use our screen reader, which all Macs have built-in screen readers that are really great. And you can turn it on through your uh, settings. And then you can also... Voice over on Chrome, Facebook window, Facebook web content has keyboard focus. You are currently on web content. To go. enter the web area, press Control, Option, Shift, Down Arrow. So it literally just reads out what my screen is. So if I was, say, a low vision user, I might be using my screen reader in conjunction with the mouse. And by doing that, I could go around and click on different things and it would read it to me. So here. Notice to Chrome, Facebook, window, now in alert, dialog, Google Calendar. Great. So you are currently on that sounds great. And then here. Now in Facebook, window. Let's see. Let's click on Notifications. This. Mark all as red. Settings. Link. Loading. See all. Link. Dialog. Mark all as red. Button. You so link. Then you settings. Link. Here. See all. For notifications, help center, pop up button. Let's see here. Story article with leaving web content. Close https colon slash slash www.facebook.com. So that's an example at the end there of when a screen reader is a little bit failing. So it's actually reading out the whole URL. Voice over off. Just something a little short that you could include in something in an alt tag, for example. So the, um, oh, where did I go? My slides went away. Hold on. Here we go. So um, the next step, let me pull this back up. Where is it? Here we go. There we go. OK. So as we just saw, HTML has a bunch of built-in functionality when it comes to screen readers, but it can also make for a bit of confusion. For example, if we needed to create a button on our website and we used a native bu button element, HTML would automatically give us things like focusability. It would read out as a button through a screen reader, and in addition to many other things. Um, native HTML doesn't always have built-in semantics, so divs and spans have no built-in functionality, 
For, so if for styling purposes, I was to create the custom button out of a div or a span and just style it like a button, it would lose all of those built-in benefits that a button would have. So I'm gonna show you a little example of native versus custom elements here. So here we have some custom checkboxes that are just styled to look like checkboxes, and we have native elements here. So we're gonna enable this. Custom checkboxes, heading two. Tim Tams, mint slices, native checkboxes, he Tim Tams, checkbox checked. So you can see that the difference between these is really drastic if you were only using a screen reader. When you use the native elements, it's gonna read out not only just the name, but also that it's a checkbox, whether it's checked or not, and then the custom elements aren't doing anything. Mint slices. Reading the text. So let's disable that. All right. So what if we needed to create our own custom elements? This is where Y ARIA comes in. And Y ARIA stands for Web Accessibility Initiative Accessible Rich Internet Applications, or just ARIA for short. ARIA works by allowing you to add things like states, roles, or properties to your HTML elements. These then modify those ways that those elements interact and are translated into the accessibility tree. This is extra useful when we want to use dynamic front-end functionality, such as React or Ajax, where we might be serving up a basic HTML and then changing, adding, or editing that front-end content with client-side scripts. ARIA does not change the functionality of your JavaScript. It'll only change the accessibility tree. So here are a few examples of the three main keys of ARIA, roles, properties, and states. So after looking at these a little bit, I think we can actually go back to our checkboxes and edit them so that they'll read out like a regular checkbox. So here you can see that this is just made out of a div. So we're gonna edit it. And we're gonna put in a role equal to, let's say checkbox, uh, checkbox. And we're also going to say aria checked and that's gonna be equal to true. All right, so now if we turn our screen reader back on. Custom checkboxes, heading two. Tim Tams, checkbox checked. Now just by adding those simple role and the aria checked states, we can now read that custom element out like a regular element. So let's disable that again. So the last piece in all this is how can we actually tell if our code is accessible or not? One of the easiest ways that I found was just Chrome DevTools extension. They have a really great one. So after you install that, you can run several things on your site, and we'll sh show you a live demo of that. We're gonna go to the full stack website. We've got some workshops here, great. So over here, you can see that I have this audit section, and when I install the accessibility DevTools, it gives me an access accessibility audit that I can run on my page. So I'm just gonna hit run. And now you can see it's giving me several things here. It's giving me severe, warning, and then passing. So here this severe is saying that my input type search, it has no label. So that's up on the top here. So we can fix that. Let's edit this. Hold that down. Edit this HTML. And let's put it right at the front. We're gonna do aria label is gonna be equal to, let's say, just search, just for an example. And then if I go back to my audits and I rerun them, now it's gone away. So that's a really easy way to interact with your site and see what fixes it, what doesn't. Let's take another one of these. Text elements should have reasonable contrast. So here, oh, these are all of the little descriptions on the workshops. So it's saying that the contrast is too low. So let's see, let's click on one. And another way you can interact with your website is in here, you'll also get accessibility and accessibility properties. So let's look at the properties. And here, see it's saying that the contrast ratio is only 2.32. And for a double A level, we'd bring it up to a 4.54. And for a triple A level rating, we'd bring it up to a seven. So you can actually click on these here and see, I don't know if you can tell on the screen, but it is actually changing my site here. And so to bring it up to a AAA level, I only need to increase it a little bit. For me, that doesn't make much difference, but if someone with low vision was trying to use this site, it would make a really big difference to them. So with all this knowledge, I hope you'll be able to join in and make the web a more open and available for everyone. 
and to not be like this kitty and think about it only when you have an issue. Thank you, and here are some more resources if you're interested. <laughs>